Okay, welcome all at our weekly seminar. Uh, today we have a, we'll have a pleasure to listen to Stefan Pesner from uh, Technical University Berlin. Uh, Stefan is, uh, is a guest and a bit our local colleague here. Uh, the ties between our two groups go back uh, at least to 2007. Um, for last semester, Stefan was here in Krakow. Um, some of our students know him well. I see two of them here today. Um, so Stefan pre prepared for today a talk on uh, on pseudo line arrangements, right? Um, pseudo circle. So the circle arrangements, yes, yes. So welcome, Stefan. Please go on. Oh, what the difference between pseudo line? <laughs> sure, you will see. Um, okay, <clears throat> trying to share. Here is here's my uh, first slide. So it's about combinatorics of pseudo circle arrangements. And yeah, here you see a pseudo circle arrangement with, uh, I guess, six pseudo circles. And this is a very interesting example. You, we will meet it later again. But let's start with the relevant definitions. So a pseudo circle is a closed curve in the plane or on the sphere. And an arrangement of pseudo circles is a collection of pseudo circles with, which behave like circles would do. So any two of them are either intersecting or touching or disjoint. Actually, typically we don't look at touching situation because with a with a tiny dis, uh, displacement you can make it a you can make it a lens, and uh, this is more convenient somehow. Um, yeah, so. An arrangement is simple if we if we never see a crossing of three or more pseudo circles in one point. So every in 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 a simple arrangement, and we don't have touchings. And it, so in a simple arrangement, every uh, every crossing is a is a crossing of degree four. And the arrangement is intersecting if any two arrangements intersect. And yeah, just for the starting, if we start with n equals three, and there are exactly two intersecting arrangements on the sphere. So uh, one of them is called the group, the three intersecting. Uh, circles here, they, they are known as the logo of the German steel company Krupp, which was the largest company in Europe in the 1920s. And now it's uh, slowly disappearing. Uh, and the other one is the non Krupp. And uh, well, this one, for the Krupp, it's, it's not relevant whether we consider it in the plane or on the sphere because whatever face you choose for the outer face, uh, it's always the same, the same picture. While for the non-crop, you have, you have different pictures on the plane. So you can uh, choose a, a two-gon, a digon as the outer face, as I did here. You can find a drawing where you have a triangle as outer face, and you find drawings where you have a four-gon as outer face. Okay, um, so this is a complete enumeration in the case uh, n equals three. And now here is the enumeration for the case n equals four. And um, yeah, let me mention that most of what I'm going to present, at least in the first uh, part is joint work with Manfred Scheucher and he is very good on the computer. He was able to enumerate uh, arrangements of pseudo circles, simple and intersecting for n equals up to seven. And you see it's already quite, quite a number of them. And um, he is also responsible for the, for the drawings of these objects. 
yeah so this is a complete uh, complete collection of intersecting simple arrangement of four Tudor circles actually all of them can be realized by with circles as well and then there is 21 connected ones and uh, we have a uh, we have pictures of them but I don't show them okay so I or already used the the things when you have an arrangement then you can talk about about the faces the cells of the arrangement and the cells come in different different degrees so degree two is diagons or lenses degree three is triangles and uh, yeah then you can then you can ask for the number of faces uh, in a simple arrangement of n pewter circles and this it's very easy to see uh, that it's n times n minus one plus two the reason being well it's a we are looking at a planar graph the number the number of vertices is clearly uh, n choose two times two so it's n times n minus one and uh, for the number of edges you look at the edges of one color so the edges which belong to one Tudor circle and then you have uh, two times n minus one crossings on the Tudor circle and the same number of edges and now with Euler's formula you you get uh, the number of faces as well yeah and then you can look at this uh, as the, the vector of the face vector how many entry pi would be the number of i faces that you see in the arrangement so down here you have the non-zero entries corresponding to this example okay so this is a basic definitions and now um, let me talk about what to expect here so i i have prepared uh, three topics which I'm going to address. The first one is triangles and diagons. It will be about the question how many how many triangles or diagons can you expect uh, to see in a simple intersecting arrangement. Then I have a I have a chapter about circularizability. So about the question uh, whether you can draw an arrangement as an arrangement of circles instead of arrangement of Tudor circles. And uh, yeah, we will see two proofs uh, which show how how you can argue that something is not circularizable. And then there is something about uh, colorings of arrangements. So uh, you have you have this planar graph, and you can look at the vertices, and you can ask for the chromatic number of this graph and uh, yeah there is some some fun questions in this in this uh, regard okay so let's start with a classical conjecture grunbaum uh, in 1972 he wrote a, a little booklet called arrangements and spreads and uh, this book is is a rich source for examples and uh, for conjectures so he was quite generous in conjecturing and one of his conjectures is this one so simple intersecting diagon free arrangements should have at least 2n minus 4 uh, triangles and now of course you can ask why why 2n minus 4 and uh, well one one explanation could be that you that you uh, go to arrangements of pseudo lines and you look at arrangements of pseudo lines on the euclidean Euclidean plane, and then we know that the number of triangles 
is at least n minus two. And the, the, then you may have the idea that you can take such an, such an arrangement, oops, sorry, uh, pseudo lines. This was again two intersecting, this is too much. So pseudo lines just cross ones. And then you take the same thing on the other side. And, um, and now you have triangles which are sitting in here and you have the same number of triangles outside. And if you are lucky, you can, you can avoid building triangles on the, on the border where you glue things together. But this is, this is not so easy. Here is another, another way of looking at it at this bound 2n minus 4. So here you see a very specific arrangement of seven pseudocircles with exactly 10 triangles. And um, two of these pseudocircles behave that they form, they, they share four triangles. And uh, these two tri the, the triangles come in, come in pairs here. And all the other pseudocircles uh, cross the two in parallel. And now you take you take the two and replace them by a set of of k. And um, the idea is that um, or k plus two. So you take the, the green and and the red. And the, here you have the parallel crossings of the other guys. And here you have the two triangles, which, and on the other side, again, you have two triangles. And now you, you plug in the blue stuff and with K blue line, uh, shouldn't be lines, should be pseudo circles. Um, you get two K additional triangles. So, Every every blue guy gets to the top twice, and where it gets to the top, it builds a, a triangle. So, and and these these four triangles are the four triangles that are already here. So you add two k, and uh, you get a fam infinite family of where where this is tied. Now. Um, what can we say about a lower bound? And, and here we have a old theorem of Snoink and Hashberger. Um, they, they could show that every pseudocircle in an intersecting arrangement can be used for a sweep, a sweep which is uh, pushing the pseudocircle out until it gets the circle at infinity and in until it gets a point. Um, well, with, with three moves, so there's a triangle flip, there's a diagon uh, removal or insertion and um, This with this two you can do, and um, and they they even show that on each side of this sweep curve you have two triangles or diagons. Now, if we in in the assumption of the Grünbaum conjecture we have that the arrangement is diagon free, so you have two triangles on either side, so you have four incident triangles, and this gives a total of four thirds and triangles. So this is a lower bound, which comes uh, easy if you have this uh, sweeping theorem. And uh, yeah, interestingly, uh, this is this is best possible. There is there are examples with this number of triangles. So here you see here you see a a drawing of of an pseudo circle arrangement 
not not complete. So this red guy should should be closed, and the blue one. And so some some of the, but you see all the intersections, and uh, there are nine pseudo circles and twelve triangles. So it's exactly four thirds. And this is a this is a construction which works for every n divisible by three. So, but but it's not a counterexample to Grünbaum conjecture. It has no diagons, but it's not simple. So you, in the middle, you have these these points where many many uh, pseudo lines, uh, pseudo circles, cross. So yeah. So this is this is where we are now. We have this the conjecture. And we have seen that this is a lower bound, and the same value is uh, is also achievable in the non-simple case. And now, again, something that uh, Manfred's computer told us is that Grünbaum's conjecture is wrong. This is an example: n equals eight, and only eleven triangles. So uh, two n minus five, and and there are more counter examples. So here here we have here we have an example with uh, with twelve pseudo circles and only sixteen sixteen triangles, and and note that here here we have here we are actually at the at the lower bound. It's only four thirds n. And and what we what we did is we use this example to generate a family, infinite family of counterexamples where the where the uh, number of triangles is approaching 16 over 11 n. So it's about 1.45 n. It's way below 2 n. And um, yeah, let me let me uh, indicate how how the construction goes. So what we what we do is um, we observe that our example here has has a path which is cutting each pseudo circle once, and it's. Uh, hitting hitting a triangle, and now the idea is that we that we take that we cut it open along this path, and we and we open it so that all the all the pseudo circles go parallel. Only only up here in this small wedge, you have you have something something happening, and these two sides of the of the triangle. Um, and this this situation here, this forms two triangle, one triangle on the left side and one triangle on the right side of the cut path, and they they are sitting here. Um, and now, now what we do is we take we take another copy of our example, and we select any of the pseudo circles. And we and we select a triangular triangular cell, and then we replace the circle by by this stuff in such a way that um, that the this, what we have here ends up in the triangle. So what what <clears throat> what happens here is we we are generating a family um, of examples indexed by by s, so that uh, we always go by adding um, replacing one pseudo circle by twelve pseudo circles. So we add eleven pseudo circles. The number. The number of pseudo circles will be a multiple of 11 plus one. 
And now what I've, let's look at the count of, of triangles. Well, um, we, we kill one triangle in the copy before. This is this triangle, which is, uh, which is killed. We have the two boundary triangles, which are generated. And we have the triangles of the old, of the, of the copy that we, that we use here, except for one of these triangles, which is destroyed by the cut pass. So it's a, it's a minus two and a plus two. So it's, we add 16, 16 uh, triangles in each iteration. And that's why we end up with 16 over 11. Yeah, so um, here is something, here's something new. Here's something I came up with uh, only recently. Uh, a new replacement strategy. So we we look at a pseudo circle, and we know that we have uh, at least four incident triangles. And um, yeah, what we what we now do is we take we take this pseudo circle and we replace it by by a strand of four pseudo circles. And these four pseudo circles behave as shown here. So. So in each of the triangles, we will see we will see three crossings, and they will form two. The, the, locally here we have two triangles, but the triangle which was up here is turned into a foregone. So in this triangle, we increase we we increase the number of triangles by one, and the same in each of them. So what what happens is that the number of uh, to the circles is increasing by three and the number of triangles is increasing by four. And now if we start with, with an example um, where you have, where you are tight with the four thirds and you repeat this, then you stay tight with four thirds. So, uh, so this is, this is resolved now. Uh, four thirds is the true value. Grimbaum was quite far from the truth. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, do you can can you do always this replacement? Yes. Yes, I can. I can do it with uh, because because you can do the sweeping. Uh, you know that the that every pseudo circle is incident to four triangles. We are in the diagon free case. And uh, ah, so this is exactly four. No, it can be more. Okay. Okay. It can okay, be but, more. But in this, but in a, this example, it's exactly four. If you if you look at the extremal case. Okay, I understand. Uh, we know that each. In, in every arrangement, which is diagon free, um, every pseudo circle is incident to four triangles. And, and uh, I, don't, I don't care about whether it's, it's an up triangle or a down triangle. This, I don't use it here. I, this, this uh, we, we could as well have, have the crossing up here and we would see the foreground up here. So it increases is by four and, and that's it. Yeah, so, so this, is, this is now um, resolved and we have a new conjecture. And, and I think this new conjecture is also quite, quite nice. So the new conjecture is that when you have an arrangement of circles, so an arrangement of pseudo circles, which is circularizable, then the, the Greenbaum value should be true. And um, I, can, I can give you some, something like uh, support for this conjecture. So let us call uh, N6 delta the arrangement which is obtained if we take, if we take the group arrangement, so just three circles and we replace one of them 
in the way we did it with this new proof. Then, um, yeah, we add three circles, so now we have six, and we add, um, and, and you count the triangles, and you see that it's eight. So it's a system of, of six uh, pseudo circles with eight triangles. And um, yeah, actually, it's this one. This is, uh, you see the gray triangles, it's eight. Um, and, and this object is non circularizable. So whatever you get, when, whenever you, you have in your in the arrangement, when you do this replacement stuff with a, with a triple and, and, and the pseudo circle that you replace contributes to a, to a group. So if there is a, something like a, a blue and a red, which together with the one that you replace form a group, then the resulting arrangement is already uh, non circularizable. And uh, yeah, so the construction gives only non circularizable uh, things. And um, well, with the computer, uh, as far as we could go, we, we also didn't find anything which is not containing this sub arrangement and still a counterexample to Grunbaum's conjecture. So, yeah, it may it may be true that uh, that this conjecture holds, this statement holds, and I, this would be very nice because this would give a non-circularizable ability proof, which is just by counting. Which is um, when you when you have too few triangles, you know this is not circularizable. This is something, um, actually, I, I did show you, I did show you this stuff here before, and, and the picture here comes from an example where you have, where we have exactly this situation. In the, in the case of Euclidean pseudo line arrangements, we know that, uh, n minus two triangles exist. Um, you, for Euclidean line arrangements, even if they are non-simple, you have you have n minus two triangles. But uh, in the non, but but this example here, if you take just one half, has too few triangles, so it cannot be it cannot be a line arrangement. It must be a pseudo line arrangement. And um, yeah, so this was, this is this new conjecture. And now um, let me, let me close this first part with, with two further conjectures. Here is something about triangles and digons. If you have an arrangement of Tudor circles, and it's simple and intersecting, but now we allow digons. Then the number of triangles is at least n minus one. And and here you see a construction which which shows that this is tight. So of course we have to we have to close uh, everything into a into a pseudo circle, but this is done trivially because we already see all the crossings needed. And and the triangles are just uh, are just these, and uh, it's n minus one. And the lower bound that we know is comes again from sweeping, but this time we can only argue that we see triangles on one side. So every every pseudo circle only contributes to two triangles, and so uh, two thirds is what we get. Two thirds n. And uh, and then here is another another question. It's this time it's about uh, the number of digons that you can have. Um, and here is a conjecture which says, if you have an arrangement of pseudo circles which is simple and intersecting, 
then the number of digons is upper bounded by 2n minus 2. And this example would show that it's tight. And yeah, this is something um, which which has find some some interest in in the discrete geometry community. Um, cutting cutting arrangements of curves at lenses is something uh, that is quite useful, and the people try to find good bounds. And the best uh, results are that the number of digons is linear. Yeah. OK, so these are three conjectures in this uh, context of triangles and digons. So let's come to the, to the second uh, part. Let's talk about circularizability. And uh, I'm going to show you two techniques for showing that something is not circularizable. So let's first look at this example. Um, this is the unique non-circularizable intersecting arrangement of five pseudocircles. So again, the, um, the equivalence is equivalence on the sphere, of course. Um, yeah, so we are going to use an incidence theorem. And, um, and here is the incidence theorem. If we have circles and they behave like here, so you have you have the the yellow one, the red one touching the yellow, the blue one touching the yellow, and the red and the blue both touching both touching the green, and uh, and here you have a lens. Then what we what we can do. Uh, then the, the claim is that the four touching points here, they, they lie on a circle. There is a circle, the black one, which is incident to all these four points. And, and how, how to see it is you can, you can take this as a point at infinity and use a, or take a Möbius transform, which pushes this to the point at infinity. So, then these two circles, the yellow one and the green one, are two circles which uh, contain the point at infinity, meaning these are lines, and they cross. So here's a crossing, and then we have we have a red and a blue one, and they are both touching these two lines. And uh, these touchings, so these two lines, which co which connect the uh, which connects these touching points, they are parallel. And now, now you can see by just, you look at the family of, of circles which contain these two and you, you grow it and, and you will hit, you will find the, the black circle. And then you use a Möbius transformation backwards and you have, you have this one. So this is a simple uh, incidence theorem in for for circles in the plane and now um, now let's look at this at this picture of our example so we select points in here in these points on the on the yellow which are sitting inside inside this uh, red and this blue and uh, points in these two lenses and then we can shrink these three circles, the red one, the green one, and the blue one, to make these uh, black points uh, contact points. So we shrink them into the interior to make these uh, contact points. And now, um, now we have now we have a situation like here like in our incidence theorem. And we know that such a, such a black circle exists. And, um, and this black circle is going from here to here, 
from here to here to here and and back again so it now uh, i made it a pseudo circle but the point is that this black guy has to has to intersect this red circle four times and and this is this is illegal because we are assuming that we have a, a situation uh, a representation of this pseudo circle arrangement where everything is a circle and then we can add another circle which is guaranteed by the incidence theorem and two of the circles the red circle and the black circle have four intersections can't be so we can so we can uh, refute the assumption that this example is has a representing uh, circle arrangement okay so this was this was the uh, the first proof of non circularizability and now let's look at this example our n6 delta and um, we want to show that this is not circularizable and our our first observation is that all the eight triangles come from non group sub arrangements so for example for example this triangle here uh, the light blue the red and the orange curve they behave like this one with um, not exactly they, they behave like like this but this is this is another picture of the same of the same guy this is a non non group arrangement and uh, so all the each of each of these triples contributes two triangles these are the eight triangles in the picture okay um, this we keep in mind and now now we look at uh, circle arrangements on the sphere and uh, now we have a circle arrangement on the sphere and each circle on the sphere we think of the sphere embedded in three space and with each circle we can we can make a hyperplane and um, and now on the basis on, on the relation of the sphere to the, and this hyperplanes we can see whether three uh, circles form a group or a non group if they form a group then um, then the intersection, the intersection of the of the blue and the red hyperplane is containing this line, and um, the intersection of the of the green and the blue is containing this line, and this so the three lines share a point which is inside of the sphere and in the case of the non group you see that the intersection of the three hyperplanes which are generated by the three circles is outside of the sphere and so this is this is a way of describing the, the distinction between the group and the non group you look at the three hyperplanes and when the three hyperplanes intersect inside of the sphere we have a group and when they when they are outside we have a non group and now um, now we think of we think of a circle representation of our of our animal then we have a sphere and we have the six circles and and the the triangles 
The triples of hyperplanes which form triangles intersect outside. And what we what we now think of is a process of shrinking shrinking the sphere. We have a we have an arrangement of hyperplanes, respectively, an arrangement of circles on the sphere, and we shrink the uh, the sphere, and we and we observe what is happening. Well, and one thing that can happen is that the sphere is losing the contact to a hyperplane, meaning that we get we have some circle which gets smaller and smaller and disappears. Another thing that can ha happen is that two circles uh, lose contact. So uh, you have you have two circles and they they form a form a diagon, and then the the sphere shrinks and the two circles get disconnected. And the third thing that can happen is a triangle flip. So you have a you have a triangle of, of guys which form a group. The, the point of intersection of the three hyperplanes is inside of the sphere and the sphere is shrinking and now it gets outside and now you have a non-group. So you're flipping from a group to a non-group. But now, if we think of our example, uh, none of these things can happen. This, the last one, cannot happen because all triangles are already non groups. This cannot happen because we don't have digons, and this cannot happen because every every circle has has some intersections. So, so the example cannot be uh, realizable by circles. Good. So enough with circularizability. Let's get to the third question, third complex colorings. So there's a fairly well known coloring conjecture. Uh, it's from a joint paper with Hurtado, Neu, and Streinu, quite old. And there we stated the conjecture that every simple great circle arrangement is three colorable. Um, and just as a remark, it's, it's very easy to see that it's four colorable. You just, uh, you, you have two, two ways of doing it. One, one way is you just observe that the graph is planar. And planar graphs are four color blue. The other one is you you say it's a four regular graph, and it's not uh, it's not a complete graph. So it's not uh, by by Brooks theorem we know that it's four color blue. Yeah. And um, to to get into the get into the topic, let's start with something with something easy. Let's look at line arrangements. This is a simple line arrangement. This is a non-simple line arrangement. I, I claim that every simple line arrangement can be colored with three colors. And uh, the a way of doing it is you just do a sweep. And when you, when you, see, when you see a crossing, you color it. So, and you do it in a legal way. And when when you see when you see a guy, then you see it, it's a crossing of two lines which are directed against the sweep. And you have at most two guys which uh, which are already colored. You can use a third color. In in some sense, we just uh, show that the, the graph is um, too degenerate. So it's three colorable. On the other hand, this one, this situation where we have a non-simple vertex, this is something uh, some some of you may recognize as the Moser spindle, which is uh, an example of a graph which is which is not uh, three colorable, a planar graph which requires four colors, and um, 
yeah. So in the non-simple case, we we need we may need four colors. Yeah. Um, now, <clears throat> pseudo pseudo great circle arrangements. Um, so we we want to get we want to get rid of the uh, great circles is a is a very geometric notion. We want to make it a bit more um, more combinatorial, and um, yeah, the, the way of stating it in a combinatorial way is to say that every triple of pseudo circles forms a group. This is this is the definition of a pseudo great circle arrangement, and um, of course this implies that every every two uh, circles are intersecting. But intersecting is not enough for for uh, three colorability. Let's look at this example. This is uh, this is five five cycles, and we have and we have many many triangles. Now let's assume let's assume that this is uh, three colorable. Then uh, in here we see a four cycle, and on this four cycle we certainly see uh, one color twice. And uh, so let's assume that these two guys are blue. And um, and now there is a certain a certain symmetry on the on the example. Yeah, this is a symmetry axis, which is still respecting the coloring that we so far have. So one of these two guys, uh, one of the one of the guys on this triangle has to be blue, and uh, this cannot be blue. So one of these two. And it's by symmetry, it, we don't care. We take this one. But now, um, now let's see. On, on this triangle, we already have, this has a blue neighbor, this has a blue neighbor. So this guy must be the blue one. And now um, on this triangle up here, this one, this has a blue neighbor, this has a blue neighbor. So this must be blue. And um, now again, we can find a triangle here, this one. This triangle. This has a blue neighbor. This has a blue neighbor. This must be blue. And um, let's see one more. This has a blue neighbor. This has a blue neighbor. This must be blue. And um, and that's it. Now um, now we every <clears throat> everybody has a blue neighbor. This is this has to be one of the color classes, but now let's look at the at the guys which are not yet colored. This one, 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 and um, this is a seven cycle. Yeah, and a seven cycle. Admits no, admits no two coloring. So we need at least four colors for this example. Yeah, and now again, with the aid of the computer, I can show you a complete enumeration of intersecting uh, arrangements with chromatic number four and small number of tuple circles. So these are the two examples for n equals five. This is the one we just discussed. Uh, there's these five examples for n equals six. 
there's exactly one for n equals seven. Um, yeah, and on the on the basis of this, yeah, one one thing if you if you go if you go and look at these examples, then then you find that the first one, this one that we discussed, is somehow special. This is the only one where you don't have this configuration. Um, two triangles sharing an edge. And we call it a diamond. Yes, and on the basis of, of this enumeration, we have two stronger conjectures. Every diamond free simple intersecting arrangement of at least six pseudo circles is recolorable. So, all the examples have diamonds. And uh, the number of, of examples is even so, there are many more examples uh, with n equals seven, there's only one. So, Maybe with n equals eight, there is no example. And another one, every sufficiently large, simple intersecting arrangement of two circles is three colorable. So sufficiently large, um, when, you, when you go on higher numbers, you may even, uh, you, you don't need the assumption that it's diamond free. Yeah. And um, and here is another another notion. When you have when you have a great circle arrangement or great pseudo circle arrangement, then uh, you can you the, the vertices come in antipodal per, pairs, and you can speak about antipodal colorings. So you fix an equator, you have the this antipodal notion. And, and uh, when you color this one yellow, the antipode also has to be yellow. And um, in, in some sense, uh, antipodal three colorings uh, are colorings of projective uh, pseudo line arrangements. So the, the usual identification of antipodal points to get from from great circle arrangements to pseudo line arrangements or to line arrangements in the projective plane. Yeah, and um, and here is more data and more conjectures. Um, so all pseudo great circle arrangements with seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven points have antipodal three colorings, and of course we can turn it into a conjecture. Um, and with n equals six, there is there is uh, just one example. Uh, no, there are two. There are these two examples which don't have an antipodal three coloring. Okay, uh, so many many new conjectures based on enumeration. And now here's a, a family of nice arrangements, tri triangle saturated arrangements. So what is this? Um, an arrangement is called triangle saturated if every edge of the arrangement is incident to exactly one triangle. And here we have the, the triangles are, are gray and we have this uh, gray and white coloring of the faces. So you always have the two coloring of the faces because the, the graph is planar and four regular. And in this, in this situation, one of the color classes only consists of triangles. And uh, yeah, so you see there are, are some examples for various N and uh, there is a general method of generating new examples from old which is a doubling method, which is kind of kind of related to what uh, what we did in the in the situation of generating arrangements with few triangles. 
So again, you replace you replace one Tudor circle by by a band of Tudor circles, and this time uh, you you have you have a certain number of of crossings and triangles in each of the of the triangles that you that you meet. Um, I'm I'm not going into details about this, but just to to show you, there is a technique which is generating infinite families. Okay, um, and now here's something here's something nice. Uh, triangle saturated arrangements are three colorable, and uh, here is here is how we do it. So. This is a part of a triangle saturated arrangement, and now what we what we do is we take this uh, the white dual. You could say we put a we put a point in each white face, and we connect them. When there is a vertex, which is uh, yeah incident to both faces, and uh, now of course every Every face in this white dual is a triangle because it just contains one one black triangle. And um, and now here is and now here is a old theorem of tight from eighteen hundred. Don't know what uh, the four color theorem is equivalent to having that uh, triangulations are three rainbow edge color colorable. And um, rainbow edge, three edge colorable means you can color the edges of this, of this white dual with three colors so that in each phase you see all three colors. And this means that if you take the, the color of the edge and put it on the vertex, and in each triangle, you see all three colors. Yeah. So um, let me let me briefly indicate how uh, how the the thing comes from the four color theorem. Um, the four color theorem easily implies states, and uh, and the way you do it is you you color with uh, with four, with four colors, and the four colors are the z uh, two square. And now, with this two coloring, you can on each edge, you can take the the mod two sum, the c two sum of the two of the colors on the on the uh, vertices, and uh, yeah, because he, they are different, you never get a zero zero. So you only use these three colors. And on a triangle, you can easily see that they, they are pairwise different. And uh, yeah, so from this edge coloring, we get this coloring of the vertices of our arrangement. So we, we found a class of great circle arrangements where the conjecture is true. And, um, and now we, we found that you, you are close to graphs which require four colors. And the construction that we came up with is this uh, corona implant. So if you have a, if you have a, a uh, triangle saturated arrangement, and in this you find a five gone, must be a white face, and you can add a circle which is just enclosing the five gone, and um, and then you have then you have this uh, slightly larger. You you have added one pseudo circle, which is of course not intersecting everything, and which is yeah, and and the claim is that the graph that you arrive at is not four colorable and uh, not three colorable and the the argument is is just by counting so um, 
the argument is by by double counting. Um, so we start with a with easy observations. The, the graph is four regular. So the number of edges equals two times the number of vertices. In one, one of the color class, you only have triangles and one five gone. So, uh, and the number of, of triangles should be delta. Then you have the number of edges is equal to three delta plus five. And comparing these two expressions for E, you find that the number of triangles is odd. And now what we do is we look at a, at a large independent set, independent set of size alpha, and we count uh, pairs, vertex phase, which are incident. And the phase is a black phase. Now, each vertex is incident to two phases. So the number of pairs we are having here is equal to two times the number of vertices in our, in our family, and this is alpha. So two times alpha. And we can look at it from the other side. Um, each triangle is incident to at most one point of this independent set. And the pentagon has at most two incidences. So we know that X is at most delta plus two. And now the two expressions for X give us this equation, inequality to alpha is upper bounded by delta plus two. But now the left hand side is even and the right hand side is odd because delta is odd. So we can improve the inequality to this one. And now multiply by three, you see that six alpha is at most uh, three delta plus three, which uh, by what we got up here is equal to two vertices, uh, number of vertices minus two and uh, divide by six. And you see that alpha is less than one third. So the independence number is not big enough to have uh, three color. Okay. So um, we also have a conjecture related to our corona construction. We think that uh, infinitely many of the examples you can get via this construction are indeed uh, for critical arrangements. And, uh, and the existence of four critical Planar for regular graphs, this is something, uh, there were some conjectures that such things shouldn't exist. And Kirster came up in the, in the late 80s, early 90s with counter examples. And actually, if you, if you redraw the Kirster example in, a, in the right way, then you see that it's actually using the corona implant. Okay, so uh, let me let me turn to a last last thing, something something quite easy, uh, fractional colorings. So I'm assuming that everybody knows about uh, B colorings and fractional colorings. It's <clears throat> The, the fractional chromatic number is the is is just the uh, LP relaxation of the fraction of the chromatic number. If you describe the uh, chromatic number by the IP, which is uh, modeling the packing problem, so you want to pack as few as possible independent set to cover everything. This is an IP and then you take the LP relaxation and the optimum is a fractional chromatic number. And you can, uh, you can bound it by looking at, at uh, multicoloring and B colorings. And uh, yeah, so intersecting arrangements admit N minus two colorings using three N colors in total. 
And uh, how is this done? So what we do is we, for every, every circle or the pseudo circle in the arrangement, we take the circle and we look at the interior and the exterior separately. And then we, we sweep the interior and using this sweep idea, we, it's an intersecting arrangement and we can, we can uh, prove that the interior is three colorable and the exterior independently also three colorable. So we can, we can color all the vertices except, except the vertices on our circle uh, with a palette of three colors. And we take, we take N palettes of three colors and doing so every vertex receives N minus two colors because it's omitted twice. The vertex is sitting on the intersection of two circles. It's omitted twice. It gets that number of, of colors and the total is this and the fraction of the two is three minus, uh, minus a little bit, uh, wait a second. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so at least uh, fractionally, the conjecture is, is true even, even in a much larger class. In, you don't need great circular arrangement, it, intersecting is enough. Um, and along this, along this line, we, we came up with this example. You may recognize it. It is an example where at the beginning I showed you that a chromatic number is four. And now I show you that the fractional chromatic number is three by taking, uh, we, we want to color every vertex twice using six colors in total. And uh, yeah, the idea is the, the blue class, um, actually the, the green, the green uh, class is exactly the class that we were using before. And then I, I take the, at the beginning, we made a choice about taking this or this. So we take the reflected one and then we use the symmetry and we take the two color, two classes out there. And then, um, yeah, we have used four colors and um, some vertices have only received one. But now this time, if you look at the guys with white and, uh, and you look at what they induce, then it's an eight circle in here and a two and a four cycle out there. So it's bipartite and you can use another two colors to uh, complete the two coloring with six colors. So we found a graph which has chromatic number four and fractional chromatic number three. And, uh, and this is a counter example to a conjecture which we found in some, in some paper uh, which was published recently. And uh, we could use a, an operation by Köster, which is a crowning operation and which is known to uh, preserve the four colorability. And we show that it also preserves the fractional uh, chromatic number. So we get an infinite family of examples which have, which have this property and uh, and we strongly disprove the conjecture. Yeah, um, I, I don't I don't have a clock here visible, uh, but I'm I'm basically through. I want to close with showing you the list of conjectures again. Um, I think there's quite some interesting stuff to 
to work with it. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have some ideas. I, I leave this as the last slide. Open the discussion.